Hi class, I'm Dr. April Strom. And in today's video, what we're going to explore is an example of implicit differentiation. So I have an equation up here, 3x squared plus y squared equals 10. And what makes this equation different than probably all the other equations you've seen so far in exploring derivatives is that this equation is not explicitly solved for say y or perhaps x. So that pr promotes a challenge for us of how to tackle the derivative here. Now you might say to yourself, well, I think I could come up with some ways in which to say solve this equation for y. But while algebraically that would work, ultimately I would have to take the square root of that and then I would get a plus and a minus version of that equation that results from that solving. And that's the challenge. So we have what now what we call an implicit equation. An implicit equation means it's not explicitly solved for one of the letters. So we're gonna still tackle its derivative, but some new notation is gonna come into play here. So I'm going to think about this equation in three parts. I've got this first term that I have to find the derivative of, the second term I'm gonna find the derivative of separately, and then I'll find the derivative of the 10. But new notation is going to come up here that we're gonna to need to tackle. When we're using implicit differentiation, we're often going to need to use this notation called dy over dx. And dy over dx tells us this is the derivative of y with respect Oops, with respect to x. And that's how we read that, the derivative of y with respect to x. And it's important for us to kind of track what we're taking the derivative of and what we're taking it with respect to. So I come to this first term with that in mind, and I say I want to find the derivative of 3x squared. Well, luckily, I'm taking the derivative of something involving an x, and I'm going to take the derivative with respect to the same x. So I'm gonna find the derivative like usual. Using the power rule, three x squared's derivative is simply six x. But no, I had to take the derivative of the x, not the y, of the x with respect to x. So I have to multiply this by my notation dx dx. This is a version of this notation over here, except for an x in the top, in the numerator here to communicate to us that we took the derivative of an x term with respect to x. I'll come back to this in a second. And I carry on and I say plus, now I've got this term y squared. Again, I'm gonna take the derivative using the power rule like normal. So derivative of y squared is simply two y, but I'm gonna note that I took the derivative of a y, but with respect to x. So now comes in this notation, I'm gonna multiply by dy dx. And this is a little bit of chain rule along with my function here. And because I took, again, the derivative of the y with respect to x, I wanna track that, okay? And I carry on with my equals and now I have just a constant 10 over here. And it really doesn't matter that um, we were taking the derivative of y with respect to x or x with respect to x. Here, I'm going to just have the derivative of a constant, which is no matter what, always zero. All right, our challenge when we're trying to find the derivative implicitly is we ultimately want to solve for dy dx in our problem. What's gonna happen is in our equation, we're gonna have these dy dx's sort of sprinkled all over the place. Luckily, we only have one of them. But the challenge for us is we want to eventually solve for that dy dx. So return back over here. Now remember I said in the three x squared, we were finding the derivative of that, six x, but we were finding the derivative of x with respect to x. Well, it turns out there, dx over dx is simply just one. And so I don't have to write it. I like to write it just because it reminds me that I'm taking the derivative of x with respect to x, then later I go in and I put my one in. So this reduces down to just 6x plus, I still have this, I'll just write as dy, or sorry, 2y dy dx, and the whole thing still equals zero. And I'm gonna still keep in mind, I ultimately wanna solve for dy dx. So this is the quantity that I want to solve for. 
And what I will do now is, how about we subtract 6x to the other side to start unraveling this equation. So I have dy times, sorry, 2y times dy over dx is equal to negative 6x. Now keep in mind, I'm multiplying the 2 by the y and also by the dy dx. So in order to get the dy dx by itself, what I can think of is let's divide by 2y on both sides. 2y here divides out with 2y over here. And now what I'm left with is simply uh, dy divided by dx, this notation that I wanted to begin with is equal to negative 6x divided by 2y. And we can simplify the constants out front, the coefficients, negative 6 divided by 2. So dy divided by dx is equal to negative 3x over uh, y in this case. And this is my final result for my derivative implicitly found um, from my equation that I started with. And just to note, and a reminder that when you're finding the derivative, you're really trying to find that instantaneous rate of change, or in essence, the slope of that tangent line. This new equation that we just received after doing this whole process actually tells us the result here, if I knew some quantity for x and the corresponding quantity for y, I would be able to determine what the slope of that tangent line is any place along this curve here that I started with. So my next video, what we'll explore is a different example of the same process of implicit differentiation that might have a little bit more twists and turns in that equation.